give me more give me give me more energy nope i don't have that say sma smash that like button <laughs> no <laughs> Everybody likes to say that I'm crazy, that I'm a conspiracy theorist until the things that I'm saying come to light. People or call people you conspiracy like, theorist? People will say, I don't know, I don't, you know, t tell me that I'm crazy without telling me that I'm crazy, mm -hmm. trying to be polite. Mm -hmm. And now people are like, you know, you know, you're on to something. Yeah. But so like yesterday... Yesterday there was a shooting in Nevada. Oh really? Yeah, and I didn't read the article, but all I could think to myself was, "Oh, huh, we ain't, we haven't dealt with this shit all year, and now that we're on the eve of an administration change, all of a sudden there's mass shootings again. There's been two in the last month. That strikes not, me as odd. Not suspicious at all." I don't. You are you are a heartless person. If you if you have any suspicion towards the mainstream media or the government, you are heartless and you don't care about little children. I don't believe in coincidence. Let's not worry about your fighting against abortion. You don't care about little children. Yeah. You can talk to me about the sanctity of life when you, you know, aren't getting abortions. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's all I could think. It's like, you know, we... And I've suspected. I mean, there's going to be some mass shootings that are, you know, legit. People are going to snap and kill people. But I think for the most part, it's state-sponsored. I think they're deep state operations. Well, that's Rather the thing. Than the, the Vegas shooter. <clears throat> His house burns down. Um, they... You look at the photos, and there's a couple of ARs on the ground and like a handful of brass when he expended a couple thousand rounds. Yeah. Not to mention the cyclic rate and the duration of the burst is consistent with a 240 machine gun. You can ask people who've spent time behind machine guns what they sound like, and because if, if their, their story of it being a bump stock doesn't add up because based off of the cyclic rate and the duration of the burst it was like 10 or 11 seconds you would have to have a 200 round magazine for an AR-15 which as far as I know they don't exist but to be able to hold that steady and perfect long enough to keep that bump stock going for 200 rounds it's not impossible, but that still doesn't change the fact that the report from the gunfire sounds like a 308. A 308 is more thumpy, and it was consistent. It didn't go like you get with the bump stocks as you're trying to maintain that pressure. It was a solid. 200 round burst from a 240, maybe an M60. Be careful, Mitch. That sounds an awful lot like reasonable analysis. What would I know? I only spent, you know, a good <laughs> portion of my life around machine guns. But you'll get a lot of people who are prior service saying, mm, yeah, that's a 240. Well, there's all sorts of like, you look at the, the different video footage that gets put out and stuff, and. <clears throat> To fabricate video footage, it would take a lot less than people think it would. You block off one street and you do, you know, there's there's little things that you do, and it's like, obviously, here, here's the thing. Obviously, I don't know what's going on, but I'm very suspicious of anybody who claims that they do, especially the media, because the media doesn't, the, you look at like the, in, in Charlottesville, right? There was this big protest. The protest was actually about Unite the Right. That's what the whole protest was started about. And it, um, the, there was this, like, video production of these, of these Nazis that were, like, had tiki torches and stuff. And, like, it was like, oh, this is a documentary, but it, the video That's cultural, it was so cultural good. That's cultural appropriation. 
Uh, it's just it, it, if if it were if it were an organic thing, there wouldn't be you, the news people wouldn't be have the, have the resources to have such high quality videos and stuff. But it was it was the big thing that they they say Trump was like he's like oh there's there was good people on each side and taken out of context and and it's just like there's so much stuff that's just it, it doesn't pass the smell the smell test. It's like that doesn't add up. Oh, like when they tried to say that he called the. World War, the World War One KIA's losers. <laughs> yeah. Suckers. Oh yeah. They got they got killed. They're losers. It's like, hmm. And then you have the people that are like, oh, I was there, and that's not what happened. Yeah. Even a guy that didn't like him, a very pro. I don't remember who it was, but it's a pretty pro-war, anti-Trump guy, and he was there. And he's like, he didn't say that. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. Trying to get that one? No, I want it to burst into flames and engulf us all. Welcome to episode 13. 14? 14. I don't know what episode we're on. We just put out 11, and I've got two more to put out. 12, 13. Yeah, this is 14. Ooh, it's going to start if you keep doing that. Maybe, but I doubt it. Episode 14, The Force Awakens with you. I have to start using Mandalorian references. I wouldn't know a thing of what you're talking about. You should watch The Mandalorian because it's badass. This is not the way. That's probably not. <laughs> okay, for today's episode, we've got a we've got special treat. A really special treat. Mitch just came up with this idea, and I fully support it. It's President or general, George Washington's farewell, farewell address in 1796. Yeah, I think uh, it was amazing about George Washington. You go to Mount Vernon and you see his tomb. On there it says, you know, here lies any, um, here lies the remains, of, or whatever it says. I can pull up a picture and look at it, but I'm not going to. Um, it says General George Washington. So he chose to be remembered as general, not as president. And I think that speaks volumes to the kind of person that he was to be remembered as general instead of, you know, president. You pointed that out. If, I think it was probably episode like three or something like that, and I hadn't ever realized that. And I had an, I, I, I was ignorant to the significance of that, just simply because I'm not in the military and stuff like that. And I didn't think about that, but it was actually, I, I, I liked that. I'm going to find a picture of it. I have to scroll back about a year. Whoa! Too far. Here we are, here's my Mount Vernon pictures. Within this enclosure rests the remains of General George Washington. Oh, cool. That's beautiful. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Maybe you can splice it in. Yeah. Then it's not just us um, talking about something cool, but then they don't get to see it. Yeah. Because I'm not walking over there. <laughs> To Fred. Mount Vernon's a really cool place. When I went there, to me, it was almost just as spiritual an experience as anything else. And just to realize the importance and the magnitude. Like, we know that he was an important an important guy. We know that he, you know, the whole thing rested on him. But it's one of those things that being able to see it presented in different ways that really just kind of grabs you. I don't know, it's really cool. If you ever get a chance to go to Mount Vernon, I'd suggest you go. It'll take you. You can spend a whole day there. 
Anyway. I saw, I saw his teeth. One of the things that I heard, I was reading a book um, about Washington. Oh, this was a while ago, for over a decade ago. But it, it, it caught my attention is how he, um, as, as a president, one of the things that he did is he constantly would get more information from those around him before they would ask, they would want him to make a decision you know and they'd want him to make a decision and and he'd be like he wouldn't make the decision until he got more info and more info and he was always getting more info then once he got enough info then it was like clear what decision was the right decision and he had a lot of like strong opinions around him and he encouraged those strong opinions but he also he listened to people but he also used his own like he he got differing opinions so that he could make a good choice and yeah. I, I think that that's really indicative of wisdom, is it shows that he really cares about, about like, honesty. Honesty, in, mm -hmm. in his address, he mentions honesty and his mm -hmm. his philosophy towards honesty. And it's just, it's really, it's really important. It's something that I think is, is oftentimes lost in our, in our society today. I mean, even in, like, when you go to college and stuff, you'll be asked to write papers that are um, persuasive essays or you know and it's like your your whole purpose is to get people to come to your side of thinking and and you're asked to persuade things that you're you don't actually believe yourself and it's like it's all about getting like manipulating and tricking people and getting people you providing emotional draws and stuff like that and it's just it's not honest and, and our society is in general has gone away from honesty as a as a core value it feels like Yeah. individuals haven't and that's why it's so important to be around individuals that are good people yeah I mean, um, when Washington was in office he was very careful um, of how he conducted himself and how he conducted the office of presidency because he knew that um, for you know, as long as the United States existed in our our republican form of government, they would be looking back at him as an example of how he did things. And now it's pretty well disregarded. But he was very cognizant of that, of the effect that he would have and the example that he set. And he didn't want to die in office because he didn't want to set that 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 precedent that, you know, you become president and then you stay until you die. Because he could have. Mm -hmm. But he really wanted to retire, which I really admire that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want mean, to retire. He, he, it feels like he... I, I assume he felt like he'd worn out his life for the country, which he had. Mm -hmm. I mean, through the war, through the wars, and through his service. Like, he just... He did a lot. He was kind of a, an important guy. Kind of a big deal. And society um, is trying to discredit him. Belittle his legacy. Mm -hmm. And well, not just his, all the founders. Yeah. Jefferson, mm -hmm. Franklin. But I love when they say that Franklin was a uh, slave owner because he was one of the nation's first abolitionists <laughs> and it it cost him a big hit to his reputation um, being so outspoken about it but um, you know but that's that's too bad but um, you look at the three-fifths compromise where slaves and all other people are counted as three-fifths of a person. People look at that in a negative connotation, which maybe we should. I don't know. But when you look at it from this way, if it wasn't for the three-fifths compromise, they wouldn't have been counted at all. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Is it bad? Yeah. It's not great. They're people. But if it hadn't been for the three-fifths compromise, they wouldn't have been counted at all.
So maybe it's one of those things that we should look at it as, well, at least it's something, given the time and the circumstances. I really don't think that we can look at it through today's lens and and really judge it. I think that's immoral. Maybe we maybe we hammer on this too much. I don't know, but to me, to me, it really feels like you think of the millions that have been aborted. It's like, where's their vote? They they're don't get. Che- a, they don't get a, a they're like cheated out of every. They don't get a breath. Every get... opportunity. Well, some of them will get a breath, and then they'll get put in a little Tupperware container and left to freeze and starve. But hey, my body, my choice. There's something to fight for. Anyway. Well, we've got a transcript of George Washington's farewell address, and it is seven pages long. (laughs) Yeah. This thing is long, and it's it's the language in it is not simple. It's a little bit you have to think about it, but it's got such good such good principles that it teaches that it's important I think to go over. And especially right now, so for those of you who or us or our kids who watch this years down the road. The currently what's happening in our political system is there's there's just a lot of there's a lot of fighting. There's this two party system where you have Democrats and Republicans and both parties are vilifying each other. Both parties are um, finding reasons why the other party is bad and both parties are screwing over the American people. And it's just like it's it's some of the stuff that Washington has has highlighted in here is directly um, relevant today. Uh, Would you say he dedicated a full page or pretty close to a a page talking about party politics? Quite a bit. I don't know how long it was, but it was quite a bit. And that's after all the other warnings that he he had given about party politics. Another thing he talks about is our interactions with other countries outside of the United States Mm -hmm. and that's something that's relevant today because for the last 50 years the US has been acting as a as a global police force almost and a lot of people get prickly about that but it's it's we you look at the the encounters we've been in and it's very clear that a lot of those encounters are for nefarious uh, parties. They're not for the American people. And we've been sacrificing our our children to political old matters. And it's, it's, it's really sad to see. Um, he also gets into the unity of the country. He's like, if you're, if you're not, as a nation, if you're not American, then you're you're divided you're you're broken apart and he, he gets into that and there's right now in in the in the so in the society you get a lot of people who are fighting for like um african-american latino-american uh jewish-american uh, uh i don't know there's there's just tons of people that are like they're 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 creating different groups within american and it's like either you're American or you're not. And if we're not united, then then we will fall. And he gets into some of that stuff. And it's just like there's there's so many things in here that are so um, relevant and important for today that it's just like it's it's worth going over. Yeah, well, we got all these people who hate our country, but they refuse to leave. And so when you say, well, why don't you just leave? Well, why don't you leave? Where the hell else am I going to go? Nobody else affords me, you know, guaranteed rights that are natural, that are mine. They're not granted by the government. 
There's no way else for us to go. That's the thing that I, I truly, sincerely believe that every people deserves a home. And America's ours. And, and we will fight for it. It's as clear and as simple as that. And, and I believe that every people deserve their own home. Like, there, it's, it's, it's um, sad that there's been so much um, unrest over, over boundary lines and over countries and stuff, especially that aren't affecting us and, and we're involved in it. We, sh we shouldn't be involved in that kind of, uh, those kind of disputes in, in a lot of cases. And, and it's just, it's, it's, it's interesting. Let's, I, I think we'll just get started. Yeah. I'm not going to read it on my phone because I'm not going to be able to see it with the sun behind us. That's fine. I'm sorry I didn't print out too. Well, when you get to the spot you want to take, want me to take over, just hand it to me. Okay. And this is a transcript of President George Washington's farewell address in 1796. It says, Friends and fellow citizens, the period for a new election of a citizen to administer and ex execute the executive government of the United States being not far distant and the time actually arrived when your thoughts must be employed in design in designating the person who is to be clothed with the important trust with that important trust it appears to me proper especially as it may con conduce to a more distinct expression of the public v voice that I should now appraise you of the resolution I have formed to decline being considered among the number of those out of whom a choice is to be made. He simply just states that we're going to be electing a new president soon. I'm not going to be, cons don't consider me, I'm not going to be, I I'm not going to be involved in it, which is very significant because he, he, d he, he consciously made himself, he, he chose to step down from being the president so that we didn't he, we didn't form a precedent where presidents could be in for life it's not he, he even states it a citizen to administer the executive government it's like he he's he's explicitly stating it's just a regular person who's going to be president you know a citizen that's that's mm -hmm. that's the core basic person it's not not a royalty not a not a um, one of the elites it's a citizen is also coming from the guy who refused a kingship. Yes. That's so that that first par that's the first paragraph and all he said is I'm not going to run next term. Like but but in saying that he articulated very clearly uh, several things that are very very important to realize. Like we don't have a we don't have a aristocracy that is our leaders. We we're we're equal. <clears throat> I beg at the same time to do, I beg at the same time to do me the justice to be assured that this resolution has not been taken without a strict regard to all the considerations appertaining to the relation which binds a, d a dutiful citizen to his country, and that in withdrawing the tender of ser and withdrawing the tender of service which silence in my situation might imply, I am influenced by no d diminution of zeal for your future interest, no deficiency of grateful respect for your past kindness, but am supported by a full conviction that the step, that the step is compatible with both. He's saying that I'm not, it's not that I love the country less and that I want to serve less. He's like, it, it's, I'm, I'm also grateful for the kindness people have shown me, but it's, it's, it's appropriate. He's saying it's appropriate that he's stepping down. He was a national celebrity. Everybody wanted him to stay, but he was done. Out of respect for him did the the army who who had turned on the on congress and was about to have a 
a coup out of respect for Washington did they put down their arms and they gave Congress the time that Congress needed to get their shit together. Well, they've had 200 and almost 50 years and they still haven't done it. Mm -hmm. The acceptance of and, con and continuance hitherto in the office to which your suffrage suffrages have twice called me have been a uniform sacrifice of inclination to the opinion of duty and to a def deference for what for what appeared to be you your desire i constantly hoped that it would have been much earlier in my power consistently with motives which i was not at liberty to dis disregard to return to that retirement from which i had been reluctantly drawn the strength of my inclination to do this, this previous to the last election had even led to the preparation of an address to declare it to you. But mature reflection on the, on the then perplexed and critical posture of our affairs with foreign nations and the unanimous advice of persons entered entitled to my confidence impelled me to abandon this idea. He said he was going to step down after his first term, but he decided not to. And he decided not to because the our foreign affairs, as well as the people that he had, his, his counselors that he actually had his, had his confidence, all unanimously um, requested him to, to continue to be the president for a second term. But he also mentioned how he was pulled out of retirement to be president and he wanted to be back in retirement. Reluctantly. Yeah. I rejoice that the state of your concerns, external as well as internal, no longer render the pursuit of inclinations incompatible with the sentiment of duty or propriety, and am persuaded whatever part partiality may be retained of my services that in the present circumstances of our country you will not disapprove my determination to retire the impressions with which i under i first undertook the arduous trust are explained on the pro on the proper occasion in the discharge of this trust i will only say that i have the good i have with good intentions contributed towards the organization and administration of the government the the best exertion the, the best exertions of which a very fallible judgment was capable not unconscious in outset of the inferiority of my qualifications experience in my own eyes perhaps still more in the eyes of others has strengthened the motives to Diff diff diffidence of myself and even um, and every day the increasing weight of years admonished more uh, me uh, admonished me more and more than that the shade of retirement is as necessary to me as it will be welcome satisfied that if any circumstance any circumstances have given peculiar value to my service to my services that were temporary I have the cons consolation to believe that while choice and prudence invite me to quit the political scene patriotism does not forbid it so he basically is saying that he he's he, he admits that he's got that he's imperfect and he says that you know I, I didn't he, he, he sh he's showing his humility without being a humble brag he basically said I'm I I don't think I never thought that I was um, the best qualified and I and I have imperfect judgment but people I've been encouraged and I've learned as I've gone and he also sa states that he um, it's 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 again it's okay that he's um, stepping down because he, he's 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 exhausted himself in the service of his country which he truly had
in looking forward to the moment which is intended to terminate the career of my public life, my feelings do not permit me to suspend the deep acknowledgement of that debt of gratitude which I owe to my beloved country for the many honors it has conferred upon me, still more for the steadfast confidence with which it has supported me, and for the opportunities I have thence enjoyed of manifesting my inv invaluable attachment by services faith, faithful and preserving though in usefulness unequal to my zeal if benefits have resulted to our country from these services let it always be remembered to your praise and as an ins instructive example in our annals and that under circumstances in which the past the passion the passions agitated in every direction were liable to mislead amidst appearances sometimes dubious this this is this is vicissitudes of, fortit of fortune often discouraging in situations in which not un unfrequently want of, of su success has countenance the spirit of criticism the constancy of your profoundly penetra uh, penetrated with this idea Sorry, I skipped a line. The uh, the consistency of your support was the essence was the essential prop in of was the essential prop of the efforts and guarantee of the plans by which they were effected. Profoundly penetrated with this idea, I shall carry it with me to my grave as a strong incitement to unceasing to unceasing vows that heaven may continue to to you the choicest tokens of its benefici beneficence that your union and brotherly affection may be perpetual that the free constitution which is the work of your hands may be set sacredly maintained that its administration in every department may be stamped with wisdom and virtue that in fine the happiness of the people of the of these states under the auspicious the auspicious of liberty may be made complete by the by so careful a preservation and so prudent a use of this blessing as will acquire to them the glory of re, of recommending it to the applause and affection and adoption of every nation which is yet a stranger to it that was that was thick one of the things that he um, mentioned in there is basically he talks about how we need to like he, he he encourages us to hold the Constitution sacred. To say to to, how did he state it? He said um, that the free Constitution, which is the work of your hands, may be sacredly maintained. And then he says that um, until every nation adopts it, who is currently a stranger to it. Like I don't know. It's just it was it was it was interesting. I'm gonna hand it over to you now, Mitch. They knew what they had created. Well, you just hold on a second. This is not big print. <laughs> I can keep reading if you want. I'm just, I'm. Tell me to. No, I didn't read. I was pointing out that this is not big print. <laughs> they can't see it. See, little words. Here perhaps I ought to stop, but a solicitude for your welfare which cannot end but with my life 
and the apprehension of danger natural to the switch would urge me on an occasion like the present to offer to your solemn contemplation and to recommend to your frequent review some sentiments which are the result of much reflection of no inconsiderable observation and which appear to me all important to the permanency of your felicity as a people these will be offered to you with the more freedom as you can only see in them the disinterested warnings of a parting friend who can possibly have no personal motive to bias his counsel nor can I forget as an encouragement to it your indulgent reception of my sentiments on a former and not dissimilar occasion interwoven as is the love of liberty with every ligament of your hearts no recommendation of mine is necessary to fortify or confirm the attachment the unity of government which constitutes you one people is also now dear to you it is justly so for it, it is a main pillar in the edifice of your real independence the support of your tranquility at home your peace abroad of your safety of your prosperity of that very liberty which you so highly prize but as it as it is easy to foresee that from different causes and from different quarters much pains will be taken many artifices employed to weaken in your minds the conviction of this truth as this is the point in your political fortress against which the batteries of internal and external enemies will be most constantly and actively though often covertly and insidiously directed it is of infinite moment that you should properly estimate the immense value of your national union to your collective and individual happiness that you should cherish a cordial hab habitual and immovable attachment to it accustoming yourselves to think and speak of it as the palladium of your political safety and prosperity watching for its preservation with jealous anxiety discountenancing whatever may suggest even a suspicion that it can in any event be abandoned and indignantly frowning upon the first dawning of every attempt to alienate any portion of our country from the rest or to enfeeble the sacred ties which now link together the various parts that right there I found very powerful he talks about the the unity that we must have as a nation and he's the how did he say that with um, basically the the concept of what he was talking about was like you need to root out anybody who tries to turn brother against brother and and you think of like you think of like the things that are taught in the in the universities of like your um, of critical race theory which teaches that Basically, it teaches about uh, white. What is it called? White privilege. White privilege. Thank you, and and stuff like that. And it's like that's that's specifically turning against others. And then you think on the other side, you think of like the the attitudes of oh, all black people are on welfare, all you know the welfare babies or the welfare state or whatever. And that's turning people against those people that are in that crappy state. And it's like turning people against America is always should always be rooted out. That should always be could should always like if if we are united as one nation, then we're strong. But when we fight over, when we when we turn to and and, and it all comes down to those those basic um, sins of of envy, of greed, of 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 wrath, of the, these basic core things that 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 are the root cause of of this this. Um, separation this this fracturing it's like we we instead of looking at each other as as brothers instead of looking at each other as Americans instead of having that fellow camaraderie that fraternal um, love we have a we have envy or we have hatred or we have disgust or we have if, if we have something else other than that 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 patriotic love for your fellow countrymen then that needs to be rooted out and, and, and destroyed. And that goes for all, that, that goes across po po political party, that goes across um, race, that goes across uh, I anything. 
if 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 we truly hold the values to of of this country, if we hold to the Constitution, if we hold to that the those those righteous values, then that needs to that needs to stand strong. I don't know. That's that's how that's how I understand that. Well, I love how he points out that people are going to um, try to take it down covertly and insidiously. I love that he says that. Hmm. Look where we are. This entire thing that has been disregarded to the annals of history, except for the few people who still try to heed, heed his warnings and his advice. And Father that, always knows best. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the thing that's um, so interesting to me is I think that a large majority of people, when they when they're put to it and they have to actually think about it, they stand for for freedom, but because we're so inundated with distraction in our society, we're so distracted by the next shiny thing or the next news story or the next uh, media hype or the next. Uh, a song by by some rapper or artist or pop whatever we're so distracted that we don't actually think of of our country and the freedom that we that we enjoy and when people stop and think about it that's they'll they'll in large part agree and that's why we do this podcast is to hopefully wake people up and help help people rise in that in that regards to the freedoms that we we, we need to fight for yeah <laughs> for this you have every inducement of sympathy and interest citizens by birth or choice of a common country that country has a, a right to concentrate your affections the name of American which belongs to you in your national capacity must always exalt the just pride of patriotism more than any appellation derived from local discriminations. With slight shades of difference, you have the same religion, manners, habits, and political principles. You have in a common cause fought and triumphed together. The independence and liberty you possess are the work of joint councils and joint efforts of common dangers, sufferings, and successes. There's a lot in that. But these considerations, however powerfully they address themselves to your sensibility, are greatly outweighed by those which apply more immediately to your interest. Here, every portion of your country finds the most commanding motives for carefully guarding and preserving the union of the whole. The North, in an under, unrestrained intercourse with the South, protected by the equal laws of a common government, finds in the productions of the latter great additional resources of maritime and commercial enterprise and precious materials of manufacturing industry. The South, in the same intercourse, benefiting from benefiting by the agency of the North, sees its agriculture grow and its commerce expanded, turning partly into its own channels, the seamen of the North. It finds its particular navigation invigorated and while it contributes in different ways to nourish and increase the general mass of the national navigation, it looks forward to the protection of a maritime strength, to which itself is unequally adapted. The East, in a like intercourse with the West, already finds, and in the progressive improvement of interior communications by land and water, will more and more find a val valuable vent for the commodities which it brings from abroad, or manufactures at home. The West derives from the East supplies requisite to its growth and comfort, and what is perhaps of still greater consequence, it must of necessity owe the secure enjoyment of indispensable outlets for its own productions uh, to the weight, influence, and the future maritime strength of the Atlantic side of the Union, directed by an indissoluble community of interest as one nation. Any other tenure by which the West can hold this essential advantage, whether derived from its own separate strength or, f or from an apostate and unnatural connection with any foreign power, 
must be intrinsically precarious. While then, every part of our country thus feels an immediate and particular interest in union, all the parts combined cannot fail to find in the united mass of means and efforts greater strength, greater resource, proportionably greater security from external danger, a less frequent interruption of their peace by foreign nations, and what is of inestimable value, they must derive from union and exemption from those broils and wars between themselves which so frequently afflict neighboring countries not tied together by the same governments, which their own rival ships alone would be sufficient to produce but which opposite foreign alliances, attachments, and intrigues would stimulate and embitter. Hence, likewise, they will avoid the, ne the necessity of those overgrown military establishments which, under any form of government, are inauspicious to liberty and which are regarded as, a particularly, hostile, as particularly hostile to Republican liberty. In this. There's two books. There's so much good stuff in this. In this, in this sense, it is that your that your union ought to be considered as a main prop of your liberty, and that the love of the of the one ought to endear to the to you the preservation of the other. These considerations speak a persuasive language to every re to every reflecting and virtuous mind, and the exhibit and exhibit the continuance of the union as a primary object of patriotic patriotic desire. It is there is there a doubt whether a common government can be can embrace so large a sphere? Let experience solve it. To listen to mere speculation is such a case, in such a case, were criminal. We are authorized to hope that a proper organization of the whole with the auxiliary agency of, go of government for the respective Sub subdivisions will afford a happy issue to the experiment to the experiment it is well worth a fair and full experiment with such powerful and obvious motives to union affecting all parts of our country while experience shall not have dem demonstrated its imp impracticality uh, Impractic impracticability there will always be reason to distrust the patriotism of, tho of those who in any quarter may endeavor to weaken its bands listen to that man there's always reason to distrust the patriotism of those who in any quarter weaken its bands if, if someone is doing something with in the name of patriotism but what they're doing weakens the country. Don't trust that person. You see that all the time. You see people hide behind their their own patriotic their view of patriotism while they they undermine the Constitution. And that's that's just it's it's sad to see. And it should be a red flag. Washington warned us it, that that's a red flag. In contemplating the causes which may disturb our union, it occurs as matter of serious concern that any ground should have been furnished with characterizing parties by geographical dis discriminations, northern and southern, Atlantic and western, whence designing men may endeavor to excite a belief that there is a real difference of local interests and views, one of the ex one of the 
expedi expedience of party to acquire influence within particular districts is to misrepresent the opinions and aims of other districts. You cannot shield yourself too much against this the jealous the jealousies and heartburnings which spring from these misrepresentations. They tend to render alien to each other those who ought to be bound together by fraternal affection. The inability of our Western country the sorry, the inhabitants of our Western country have lately had a useful lesson in this in this head. They have seen in the negotiation by the executive and in the unanimous ratification by the Senate of the treaty with Spain and in the universal satisfaction 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 at that event throughout the United States a decisive proof how unfounded were the suspicions propagated among them of a policy of a general gov of the general government and in the Atlantic state states unfriendly to their interests in regard to the Mississippi they have been witness they have been witnesses to the formation of two treaties that with Great Britain and with Spain which secure to them everything they could desire in respect to our foreign relations toward towards confirming their prosperity will it not be the their wisdom to rely for the preservation of these advent advantages on the union by which they were pr procured will they not henceforth be de be deaf to those adverse adverse um, advisors in such uh, uh, if such there are if such there are who would serve them from their brethren and connect them with aliens oh <laughs> well it's 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 interesting how he points out how people are going to misrepresent those that are far away from you and say that your local um, desires are different than those that are far away from you for the purpose of dividing us and he's like he, he um, I don't are you familiar with the the treaties of the Treaty of Spain that he referenced here no I'm not either I it's something maybe I should look into but what it sounds like and just from his, his what he's saying it sounds like there were a lot of there was a lot of conflict over by um, in by the Atlantic is what he calls it but uh, the Atlantic states, um, but there, there, there was a conflict that they they came together with in a treaty with Spain, and everybody it was unanimous, pretty much unanimously approved of. But the people in the Atlantic states were worried that it was not in their best interest because of the misrepresentation of the of the other states' interests and stuff. And it was just like, as like showed an example of how people getting us to fight each other are not helping the, the country. They're not helping the union. And, and, you mean like what's going on right now? Exactly. Exactly. China, Russia, the United Nations. Well, even within the country. Well, yeah. It's like... Well, you, yeah, exactly. Even within the country, trying to tear us apart. But there is so much um, foreign influence in all of it, too. Yeah. To the efficacy, to the effic, uh, efficacy, efficacy, efficacy. Thank you. To the efficacy and permanency of our of your union, a government for the whole is indispensable. No alliances, no alliance, however strict between the parts, can be an adequate substitute. They must inevitably experience the infractions and interrupt interruptions which all alliances in all times have experienced sensible of the moment a mem momentous truth you have improved upon your first essay by the adoption of a constitution of government better calculated than your former for an in, in intimate union 
and for the efficacy, efficacy, efficacious, efficacious, I don't know, efficacious, it's efficacy, <laughs> but it's with a shus at the end, <laughs> it's a hard word to pronounce, effectious, um, and for the effectious management of your common concerns, the government, the offspring of your t own choice, in, um, uninfluenced and unawed, un adopted upon full investigation and mature deliberation, completely free in its principles, in the, dis in the distribution of its powers, uniting security with energy, and containing within itself a provision for its own amendment, has a just claim to your confidence and your support. Respect for its authority, compliance with its laws, acqu acquiescence in its measures, are duties enjoyed by the fundamental maxims of true liberty. The basis of our political systems is the right of the people to make and to alter their constitution of government. But the constitution which at any time exists till changed by an explicit and authentic act of the whole people is sacredly obliga obligatory upon all. The very idea of the power and the right of the people to establish government presuppo presupposes the duty of every individual to obey the establishment gov uh, the established government all obstructions to the execution of law all combinations and associations under whatever plausible character with the real design to direct control counteract or awe the regular deliberation and action of the constitute of the constituted authorities are destructive of this fundamental principle and the fateful the fatal tenden and of fatal tendency they serve to organize faction to give to give it an art artificial and extraordinary force to put in the place of the delegate to put in the place of the delegated will of the nation the will of a party often a small but artful and enterprising minority of the community and according to the alternate triumphs of different parties to make the public administration the mirror of the ill-concerted and incongruous projects of faction rather than to rather than the organ of cons consistent and wholesome plans digested by common councils and modified by mu mutual interests. However combinations are, are however combinations or associations of the above description may now and then answer popular ends, they are likely in the in the course of time and things to be potent engines by which cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men will be enabled to subvert the power of the people and to usurp for themselves the reins of government, destroying afterwards the very engine which, which have engines which have lifted them to unjust domain. Wow. Sound familiar? Yeah. sounds really familiar to me I think it interesting how he points out the all combinations like just is straight up he's, he's referring to secret combinations it's referring to the, the cabals and these these different people who are um, who are manipulating the system to put themselves in power and then destroying the system I'm of the opinion that had the founders been around after World War II, or even now, we would have no part of the UN oh, at all. No, we, we shouldn't. 
Well, you and I know that, and a lot of people that we know and talk with agree with that. But there's a huge part of our society that are like, well, if we're not part of the of the United Nations, well, what's going to happen? Well, America's going to come first. Yeah. Who who? That's the thing. Is like, why would we why would we abdicate our sovereignty? Why would we give up our own ability to rule ourselves? Like, why would that just takes the power from the people and gives it to another organization? Gives authority to another organization? It's not going to have your best interests in mind. No, it clearly doesn't. World government ends in disaster for the individual. It's great for the the elite. No, it'll end in disaster for them too. Well, it, eventually. It won't sustain. That's, you know, we've said it before, how you can't legislate morality. Well, you can't have a country and be free without morality. Like, morality is a necessary um, prerequisite to freedom. Because if you, if, you, if, if you are in a country where everybody's immoral, everybody has, um, does not have the... You don't place like honesty. You don't place the values on 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 who you are. Then that freedom is just a, it's like it's like giving a mob a the the rule. You know, if everybody votes, but they vote for evil, then evil gets decided, and, and especially in a, in a in a country that utilizes democracy. Well, that's very fitting for where we're at in this in this address because we're coming into the the parties and um, I had this conversation with my dad the other day you know we had the two parties that have been running everything for 170 some odd years and everybody says well I'm voting for the lesser of two evils when you're the reality is you're still voting for evil mm -hmm. and the evil isn't going to regress as long as you support it whether you think it's the right the right or the left or whatever you're still promoting evil and allowing it to perpetuate and grow and grow and grow until we're where we are now Towards the preservation of your government the and the permanency of your pre present happy state, it is requisite not only that you steadily discountenance irregular op oppositions to its acknowledged authority, but also that you resist with care the spirit of innovation upon its principles, however specious the pretexts. Listen to that. Not only, not only that you steadily discountenance irregular opposition to it, to its acknowledged authority, but also that you resist with care the spirit of innovation upon its principles, however specious the pretexts. The that that innovation to its principles that 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 line right there makes me think of those people who are like. Oh, it's this is this is a perfect example. It's like, oh, it's a it's a human right to be able to speak. Like freedom of speech is a human right, and you know, uh, freedom freedom of religion is a human right, and like freedom. Okay, free everybody deserves a, a freedom of, of housing is a human right. It's like, do you see how naturally it's like, oh, that's a. And then we get to healthcare is a right. Yeah, exactly. Healthcare is not a right. Healthcare is a service. Well, neither housing's not a right either. Exactly. It's it's one of those things where it's like, you 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 the regardless of how um, specious. I wish I knew better the the um, definition of specious. How's it spelled? S P E. Wait. Shus. S at what? S P E. C I O U S. C I. O -U -S. O U S. Superficially plausible, 
but actually wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's like, regardless of how good it sounds. Um, however specious the pretext. One method of assault may be to affect in the forms of the Constitution... Oh, sorry. Yeah, in the forms of the Constitution, sorry. alterations which... With imp which will impair the energy of the system, and thus to determine, and thus to undermine what cannot be directly overthrown. Wow. In all the, I'm going to turn this over to you. But wow, this is good. In. Okay. In. Thank you. Fire is hot. <laughs> yes. I got a little carried away. I like it. In all the changes to which you may be invited, remember that time and habit are at least as necessary to fix the true character of governments as of other human institutions. That experience is the surest standard by which to test the real tendency of the existing constitution of a country that facility in changes upon the credit of mere hypothesis and opinion exposes to perpetual change from the endless variety of hypothesis and opinion and remember especially that for the efficient management of your common interests in a country so extensive as ours a government of as much vigor as is consistent with the perfect security of liberty is indispensable yes time and habit he tells us how to fix the the problems mm -hmm. time and habit he's acknowledging that it was built on compromises on compromise and that there are some imperfections well that the way that i understood that as well is like when things happen like what we're in right now the way that you fix it is time and habit you outlive it you grow you you raise your family right and over time and with the habit of living freely and learning about the Constitution and learning about these things, that's how it fixes it. It fixes itself. You don't have to, you don't have to sit, rely on mechanisms or um, votes or, well, I mean, yeah, it's important to be involved in stuff like that, but the important thing is to outlive the evil. Just outlive the evil. That's all you have to do is just, just survive. Help your family to live and thrive, and regardless of what's going on, teach them what's right, and that's how you win. Not only teach what's right, but do what's right. Live it, yeah, exactly. Reminds me of a... So, I've been... At work, I've been doing a lot with, like, um... Use the hook. Don't tell me what to do. There you go. Look how much easier. I'm going to poke this thing at you. <laughs> but anyways, um, so in, in management and stuff, there's a lot of people who talk about... Oh, you gotta build trust. You gotta do. They they talk about techniques of 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 building trust with people, and it's good to talk about those techniques because a lot of people don't find those intuitive. But one thing that they don't talk about enough is being trustworthy, just being good people, and like that's something that that I, I try to bring up is like, yeah, it's important to to have trust of others or to to gain the trust of others. But the the core thing in gaining trust of others is you need to be trustworthy. Like, if you're not trustworthy, then those techniques are just manipulation, and it's and it's evil. Outlive the evil. Liberty itself will find in such a government, with powers properly distributed and adjusted, its surest guardian. It is indeed little else than a name. Where the government is too feeble to withstand the enterprises of faction, to confine to confine each member of the society within the limits prescribed by the laws, and to maintain all this, all in the secure and tranquil enjoyment of the rights of a person and property. Person and property. I have already intimated to you the danger of parties in the state, with particular reference to the founding of them on geographical discriminations. Cities versus urban versus rural. I found out this this week that um, I heard it. Maybe I didn't look this up. I heard somebody say it that there was like 80% of the population in the United States lives in a big city. 
like 80% lives in a big city and I was just like that made me sad it's like uh, cities they destroy themselves mm -hmm. well they take us all down with them yeah well they don't have to not if you don't depend on them <laughs> uh, yeah that's, that's why self-sufficiency is so important well if you look at it the heads the heads of like big corporations and big companies are in the cities because they have access to business partners and you know, yeah, a, lot, a lot of other things but where does the manufacturing take place out in the countryside yeah manufacturing Cheap typically land. takes place Cheap out taxes. in the more rural places so i mean the cities collapse it wouldn't be hard to you know change your management to one of your more rural facilities and run everything from there but I'm going to start that all over so again. So what you're saying, Mitch, is that we, in the the rural people, should stop producing stuff so that the cities die off, and then we can live. That is so a good idea. Is that what you're wanting? That is a good idea. It's like a reverse siege. <laughs> just, stop re re just stop going to the city. Yeah, just stop going to the city. <laughs> I'm going to start this over again, just because of how important I feel it is. I have already intimated to you the danger of parties in the state, with particular reference to the founding of them on geographical discriminations. Let me now take a more comprehensive view and warn you in the most solemn manner against the baneful effects of the spirit of party generally. This spirit, unfortunately, is inseparable from our nature, having its root in the strongest passions of the human mind. It exists under different shapes in all governments more or less stifled, controlled, or repressed, but in those of the popular form it is seen in the greatest rankness and is truly their worst enemy. It's not easy to break away from the party lines, um, but it's something that you that you have to do. And, you know, it's like like in, in my circumstance I'm surrounded by hardcore Republicans and any time that I ever speak out against the Republican Party I'm all I'm immediately ostracized and called liberal and everything and, and some people are like why don't you, why don't you, why don't you uh, why don't you love America more I do love America more that's why I don't follow the party lines Oh, man. I'm probably one of the most patriotic people you will ever meet. <laughs> That's so funny that they... And I will put my country before damn near everything else. God... Does that, does that sound right? <laughs> God, family, country. In that order. Not party. No. No. Party is what? A bunch of fat cats... And they've convinced you that if you break away from the lines, that the other side will win. Yeah, it's the boogeyman. It, like they, that's that's it. Really is just let's let's be scared of the boogeyman. It's it's global warming for the for the politics. The alternate domination of one faction over another, sharpened by the spirit of revenge, natural to party dissension, which in different ages and countries has perpetrated the most horrid enormities is itself a frightful despotism. But this leads at length to a more formal and permanent despotism. The disorders and miseries of which result gradually incline the minds of men to seek security and repose in the absolute power of an individual. And sooner or later the chief of some prevailing faction, more able or more fortunate than his competitors, turns this disposition to the purposes of his own elevation on the ruins of public liberty. Without looking forward to a, an extremity of this kind, which nevertheless ought, to, ought not to be entirely out of sight, the common and continual mischiefs of the spirit of party are suspi sufficient to make it the interest and duty of a wise people to discourage and restrain it. This is exactly where we are. This is like a road map. <laughs> it serves always to distract the public councils and enfeeble the public administration. 
COVID. It agitates the community with ill-founded jealousies and false alarms, kindles the animosity of one group of one part against another, foments occasionally riot and insurrection. It opens the door to foreign influence and corruption, which finds a facilitated access to the government itself through the channels of party passions. Thus, the policy and the will of one country are subjected to the policy and will of another. I wanted to say he didn't say anything about peaceful protests, but it kind of was too a while back because he talked about riots and it's just it's it's so it's so many things where it's like, I mean the 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 jealousies of of one party against another. You think of like the whole uh, white privilege, and then you also think of like the whole people who get mad about. Um, affirmative action and the people who get mad about like it, it's it's all it's all just self-interest so there's there's been so much self-interest in so many different parts of our society that it's it's hard for pe us to be united again but the way you uni unite is you outlive the evil There is an opinion that parties in free countries are useful checks upon the administration of the government and serve to keep alive the spirit of liberty. This, within certain limits, is probably true, and in governments of a mon monarchical caste, paper patriotism may look with indulgence, if not with favor, upon the spirit of party, but in those of the popular character in governments purely elective it is a spirit not to be encouraged from their natural tendency it is certain there will always be enough of that spirit for every salutary purpose and there being constant danger of excess the effort ought to be by force of public opinion to mitigate and assuage it a fire not to be quenched it demands a uniform vigilance to prevent its bursting into a flame Lest, instead of warming, it should consume. It is important, likewise, that the habits of thinking in a free country should inspire caution in those entrusted with its administration to confine themselves within their respective con constitutional spheres, avoiding in the exercise of the powers of one department to encroach upon another. The spirit of encroachment tends to consolidate the powers of all the departments in one, and thus to create whatever the form of government a real despotism. Consolidating all the powers of, of um, departments into one uh, encroachment. That's what's happening right now with the COVID stuff. We've got the executive branch who you, you, our, our um, other branches have, have abdicated their authority to the executive and the executive is now making laws which not laws. They're making what are they called? Edicts? Mandates. Mandates. And the mandates are not constitutional. And they're also, the, the executive sh sh has no authority to make law. That's not the role of the executive. But the, the state senators and stuff like that are, are not doing their jobs. You don't vote for those, the, you don't vote for the governor to create law. That's not his role, or it's not his job, and that's not his, his authority. And when he tries to do that through different names, whether that be mandate or executive action or whatever it is I mean this is for the president as well they don't make laws and that's that's something that's very it's not good I feel like we're dealing with one of those giant cartoon snowballs this rolls down the hill it gets bigger and bigger and bigger except for in this instance it's not near as funny Like Washington said, instead of a fire that warms, it consumes. A just estimate of that love of power and proneness to abuse it which predominate, predominates in the human heart is sufficient to satisfy us of the truth of this position. The necessity of reciprocal checks in the exercise of political power by dividing and distributing it into different depositor depositaries and consulting each the guardian of the public will against invasions by the others 
has been uh, evidenced by experiments ancient and modern some of them in our country and under our own eyes to preserve them must be as necessary as to institute them if in the pit if in the opinion of the people the distribution or modification of the constitutional powers be in any particular wrong let it be corrected by an amendment in the way which the constitution designates but let there be no change by usurpation but let there be no change by usurpation for though this in one instance may be the instrument of good it is the customary weapon by which free governments are destroyed. Does he say that twice? No, I said it twice. Okay, because when I was listening, uh, I, I listened to this earlier. I thought I thought it was important. No, the, I think that it was. I think that that same statement was said twice as well in the thing that I was listening to. I think it is important. I'm gonna read uh, the whole sentence again. Okay. But let there be no change by usurpation, for though this, in one instance, may be the instrument of good, it is the customary weapon by which free governments are destroyed. The precedent must always greatly overbalance in permanent, permanent evil any partial or transient benefit, which the use can at any time yield. We're like halfway through. Top of the page? Yeah. What the hell are you doing to my fire? I like it like that. It won't, it won't burn evenly, Fred. You're always about evenness. You know? When sometimes I, I sometimes I'm just a little off. A little? <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Fire. On all of the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. In vain would that main claim the tribute of patriotism, who who should labor to subvert these great pillars of human human happiness, these firmest props of the duties of men and citizens, the mere political, the mere politician, equally with the pious man, ought to respect and cherish them. Let me read that again. The mere politician, equal with the pious man ought to respect and cherish them. That's, Equal. That's referring to religion and morality. A volume could not trace all their connections with private and public felicity. Let it simply be asked, where is the security for property, for reputation, for life, if the sense of religion, obligation, religious obligation desert the oaths which which are the instrument of investigation in courts of justice that right there is saying that if the people who are in the courts of justice the, the oaths that they swear to uphold the judges the military even the um the politicians even those oaths that they swear to uphold if people reject religion if they reject morality then those oaths mean nothing and that's true. You see that today. You see how many people are are um, doing things out of their own interest, and and the 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 oaths that they take don't mean anything to them, and it's 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 disgusting. And let us hold and let us with caution indulge the sup, su, supposition that morality can be maintained without religion. That's, let us with caution indulge the supposition that morality can be maintained without religion. Whatever may be con conceded 
in the influence of refined education on minds of, pe of peculiar structures, reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can prevail in exclu exclusion of religious principles. So, um, one thing I kind of want to talk about real quick is a lot of people sit there and will argue that the founders were atheists and that they didn't really believe in God when that's not true. Washington was a very spiritual man. Jefferson was a pretty spiritual man. They weren't atheists. They were agnostic. So they believed in a God and they believed in Christ. But they didn't subscribe to one particular religion. Um, the, the thing that the, the founders knew the Bible... They knew it better than any other generation before them to that time. The founders there, they they had different, um, they believed in different sects of Christianity, but they, they, in a large part, were Christian. I'm trying to find those pictures that I sent to you. Ah, uh, yes. So... In Thomas Jefferson's writings, he said, If the freedom of religion guaranteed to us by law and theory can ever rise in practice under the overbearing inquisition of public opinion, truth will prevail, will prevail over fanaticism and the genuine doctrines of Jesus, so long perverted by his pseudo-priests, will again be restored to their original purity. This reformation will advance with the other improvements of the human mind, but too late for me to witness it. Yeah. And another thing he said in a letter to Dr. Benjamin Waterhouse, he said, Happy, is, happy in the prospect of a restoration of primitive Christianity, I must leave to younger athletes to encounter and lop off the false branches which have been engrafted into it by the mythologists of the Middle and Modern Ages. Yeah, the Founding Fathers in, in large part were Christian. Like that's, that's, um, people say that they were atheists. I mean, Thomas Paine was an atheist. There were a few atheists among them. Yeah. But a large part, they, the vast majority of them were Christian. The prayer at Valley Forge is not consistent with Washington being an atheist. No. <laughs> No. Um, and his, his writings and the things that he says and the counsel that he seeks, he always seeks counsel from the Lord. So, it's kind of like saying, if someone doesn't go to the Baptist church or the Catholic church or the, uh, I don't know, whatever, if, you, if someone's, they, someone believe, reads the Bible and they study the Bible, but they don't go to a specific church, that's like calling them an atheist. It's like, no, no, that's, that's not actually correct. They're, they're Christian. Yeah, they might not be a part of any specific sect. They, yeah. But they're Christian. Sorry. No, you're fine. I just, oh, man. It's so it's so beautiful, but yet people try to subvert it in every, any way possible. The atheists are always seeking to discount anything having to do with God. And it's, it's crazy how they... There's there's a clear and and intentional distinction between um, church and state in our country, but that distinction does not mean that there is no that does not mean that there is no um, place for for religion in our country. That that distinction is not it's not an indictment on Christianity or an indictment on any religion. It's it's basically we we try to be open to we try to get, provide the freedoms that man can worship how and what they ju what they please it's to keep one religion from overbearing domineering and over, dominating yeah. everything exactly. else and becoming the state religion exactly but the and people it's also to restrain the government from using abusing that religion and, in, in or, the name of yeah but 
what do we have because of it? We have people who, I mean, again, it's this is this is again that same principle of of adding to the principles that 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 the Constitution prescribes to. You know, the whole argument that I said with the when you um uh, oh the what do you, you call give it? a mouse a cookie? Well, that that's what it's doing. But it's the um, I just said it earlier today. The you, it's a right to have the freedom of speech. It's a right to have the um, the freedom of association. It's a right to have uh, the housing. It's like okay, there are two things there that are rights, and then there's one thing there that is not a right. And the the, the same argument has been used for the separation of religion and state. It's like well, no, that extremist view of oh there can be you have to take down the the ten commandments in front of the the city hall that's that's not it the city hall is meant for the people you know if the people want the ten commandments there then the ten commandments should be there not because one or two people disagree with it exactly it's 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 like yeah there's a there's it's it's improper for the government to enforce religious laws on people but it's also improper for the people to, uh, for individuals to to remove any reference to like uh, people wanting to remove um, in God we trust or one nation under God and stuff like that it's like th that's not that's not proper either you know I say if we do away with one nation under God or in God we trust we go back to mind your business I think mind your business is great Mind your business, and on the back side of it said, um, we are one. And the coin was, uh, fa, uh, what was it, Fabio? I'm trying to remember exactly. There was a, It's a Latin word, and I don't remember what it refers to. Fabio? Fabio? I don't remember. I was, I was looking this up. But Disregard. Yeah. Back to, back to Washington's address. It is, sub, it is substantially true that virtue or morality is a necessary spring of popular government. The rule indeed extends with more or less force to every species of free government. Who, who, that, is a sincere, who that is a sincere friend to it can look with indifference upon attempts to shake the foundation of the fabric. What was that thing that we went to? The... Um, we didn't go to it was a it was a uh, on a video call on Sunday night. Oh, uh, what about it? The one of the people there said they said that um, every every government is a theocracy to some extent, and and he was referring to how we just choose what our God is type of a thing, and it was it was an interesting thing, but um, but it kind of echoes what what Washington is saying here that basically. Morality is necessary is necessary for any. Uh, he, he, the the actual word is virtue or morality is necessary is a necessary spring of popular government. The rule indeed extends with no with more or less force to every species of government uh, of free government. Who that um, who that is a sincere friend to who that is a sincere friend to it can look with indifference upon attempts to shake the foundations of the fabric. Anyways, promote then as an object of primary importance institutions for the general diffusion of knowledge in promotion in proper in proportion as the structure of the government gives force to public opinion. It is essential that public opinion should be enlightened. As a very important source of strength and security, cherish public credit. One method of Ooh, this is the part. <laughs> one method of preserving it is to use it as sparingly as possible. Avoid occasions of experience by cultivating peace, but remember also that timely disbursements to prepare for danger frequently prevent much greater disbursements to repeal it. Avoid likewise the accumulation of debt not only it, by shunning occasion occasions of expense but by vigorously exerting by vigorously avoiding uh, by vigorously exertion in times of peace to discharge the debts which unavoidably which 
unavoidable wars may have occasioned, not ungenerously through, not ungenerously throwing upon posterity the burden which we ourselves ought to bear. The execution of these facility maxims belong to your representatives, but it is necessary that public opinion should cooperate to facilitate to them the performance of their duty. It is essential that you should practice, should practically bear in mind that towards the payment of debts there must be revenue, that to have revenue there must be taxes, that no taxes can be devised, devised which are not more or less inconvenient and unpleasant, that the intrinsic embarrassment unre- unseparable from the selection of the proper obje- object- objects, which is always a choice of difficulties, ought to be a dis- decisive motive for a candid construction of the conduct of the government in making it and for a spirit of acquiescence in the measures for obtaining revenue which the public ex agencies ex agencies may at any time dictate do you think we can buy a narrator do you think what i think we can buy somebody to narrate <laughs> for us yeah. <laughs> i think you read better than i do uh, I'm terrible at this. Observe good faith and justice towards all nations. Cultivate peace and harmony with all religious and morality. Enjoy this conduct. And can it be that good policy does not equally enjoy it? It will be worthy of a free, enlightened, and at no distant period a great nation to give to mankind the magnanimous and too novel example of a people always guided by an exalted justice and benevolence who can doubt, who can doubt that in the course of time the things the fruits of such a plan would richly repay any temporary advantages which might be lost might be lost by a steady adherence to it can it be that providence has not connected the permanent fel- felicity of a nation with a ver- with its virtue? The experiment, at the experiment at least, is recommended by every sentiment which enables human nature. Alas, is it rendered impossible by its vices? In the in the execution of such a plan. Nothing is more essential than that permanent inveterate antipathies against particular nations and passionate attachments for others should be excluded, and that in place of them just and amicable, amicable feelings towards all should be cultivated. The nation which indulges towards another a habitual hatred or a habitual fondness is in some degree a slave. Let me read that again. The nation which indulges towards another a habitual hatred or a habitual fondness is in some degree a slave. It is a slave to its an animosity or, it, or to its affection, either of which is sufficient to lead it astray from its duty and its interest. Antipathy in one nation against another disposes each more readily to offer insult and injury, to lay hold of slight, to lay hold of slight causes of umbrage, and to be haughty and intractable when accidental or trifling occasions or dispute occurs. Hence, frequent collisions, abstinent, envenomed, and bloody contests, the nation prompted by ill will and resentment sometimes impels to war 
the government, contrary to the best calculation of policy. The government sometimes participates in the national pro propensity and adopts through pa passion what reason would reject to other what reason would reject at other times to make an animosity of the nation subservient to project projects of hostility in instigated by pride ambition and other sinister and pernicious motives the peace often sometime the peace often sometimes perhaps the liberty of nations has been the victim the peace often sometimes perhaps the liberty of nations has been the victim I want to talk about a couple of things real quick um, so he was talking about the debt a while ago and he, he said, you know, to use, to use it as sparingly as possible. Um, he acknowledged that there were times that it was going to happen. Unavoidable wars, um, this, this isn't that. Um, but he says that it needs to be paid off quickly and that we shouldn't pass it to our, pro our posterity. And he acknowledges the need for taxes... But what did he say about the taxes? That they're uncomfortable? Well, that they shouldn't hurt. Yeah. And then... So that they're going to be uncomfortable, but they should be reasonable. Yeah. Or something that affects... Unlike where we are now, where... People are literally... they Like, you, you literally have people who um, change the structures of their businesses. They change the... Uh, they, they do so many things to avoid taxes. They do, they, um, not necessarily tax related, but it's kind of when, when in dealing with, um, in handouts, what do you call them? Handouts? Like Benefits? Ben nah. Uh, like welfare. When, in dealing with welfare. Entitlements. Entitlements, yes. I've, I've seen, personally, I've seen people ask for, who, who are offered raises, and ask to not receive that raise, because if they receive that raise, they would no longer qualify for the benefits that they have. And it's just like, the, the government should not be that involved in, in our lives. It should not be, it, you shouldn't have to structure your business in a way to protect against being pillaged by the tax code. It's just that's that's not the the, the the deal. It's not the proper role of government. No. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was permanent friends and permanent enemies. So, um, do you remember during the debate, one of the debates between Trump and Biden, Biden was sitting there ostracizing Trump for getting North Korea to the table. You remember that? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's you're you're being diplomatic. Say he's a bad, saying he's a fun guy and hanging out with him. Blah blah blah. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> and, and all I, all I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, so trying to make an enemy a friend is a bad thing. Trying to cultivate peace is a bad thing. That's what we're supposed to do. And we're not supposed to have. Permanent friends and permanent enemies. Because that makes you... Slave. Exactly. Like when you care about what other people think. Or you hate somebody so bad that you just don't let it go. You are, in a way, a slave to that person. Can anybody tell me why we got into Vietnam? Communism. Anybody? Communism. You know, I was I was looking at I was watching uh, um, the I was I was learning about um, how the North invaded the South. The Vietnamese view our role in their in that conflict, and it's just like 
what did they do to us, you know? What did they do to America? The Russians were there. The North Vietnamese invaded the South, and the South requested help. Right. So the U.S. came in. All it was was a proxy war, just like everything else that we fight. Because war between big nations are over. You're not going to see the U.S. and China square off against each other. You're not going to see the U.S. and Russia square off, Russia and China. You're not going to see them go head-to-head -head anymore. So it's all proxy war. And these people in these in these countries where the wars end up fighting are just stuck in the middle of it. Well, the interesting thing about the communism that was adopted in Vietnam is like, yeah, there was communism, but the, the, the leaders of the communism were nationalist in the first. They wanted to unite the, the, the Vietnamese people first. And that's that was they, they did it under uh, under communism, which the the guy who led the revolt was he went to France and he learned in France and that's where he got indoctrinated with the whole communistic manifesto and that that garbage and stuff. But he he the the Russians viewed and and the other communist parties viewed them as oh they, they're one of us they're communistic and the Vietnamese were like we want to be Vietnamese. It's like communism, yeah. That they 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 were like they, it was a secondary goal. The primary goal was to unite the Vietnamese people, and it was just like a lot of the a lot of the people in the South, a lot of the people supposedly wanted to be united as well. But there was a lot of corruption in the South, and the figureheads that had been put up in the in the South were it was a corrupt government, and so the corrupt government asked for help and stuff, and it was just like the the people were not interested in, for the most part in, they wanted to be united but it was it was all fighting against corruption in the north that was one of the things that they're at least according to the the stuff that i was looking at and again i don't i don't say i trust that but the people in the north they were fighting to root out corruption and yeah they were under communistic policies and so it was one of those things where it was like you 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 the u.s used communism as a big boogie as a boogeyman to get involved in something that had no direct impact on the United States citizen. At that time. Yeah. But had we let communism just spread rampantly, that would have been a problem. I don't know what the right answer is. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't, I'm but not trying there's, to say... There's certain things that you can't just let be, like uh, radical Islam that's aided by the U.S. toppling dictators and Islamic countries and then not ensuring that they are set up properly before we leave. And communism was one of those things. You couldn't just let it spread rampantly. Why? Why? Because then eventually everybody else is a communist and that's the United States against the entire world. I don't... It seems like to me the United States, if we focus on the world, let the world... Like, communism itself... It only works for a short time until you, until you, um, what do you exhaust the resources of those who you consume. Yeah. And so. But as as communism spreads, because you know you look at it, um, Russia was communist. Then World War Two came, and Russia, sw you know, swept clear down into Germany and turned everything from Russia to East Germany communists and it would have kept spreading if, like if you did that with with North Korea and let it spread south because it came from China spread down to North Korea and then spread down to South Korea and then spread from there pretty soon you have all the countries on in Europe and Asia communist communist and then it spreads to South America and comes up all of a sudden you're surrounded by communism and so you can effectively turn the entire world against the United States, which the United States, I honestly believe we could defend ourselves and, and keep it. But it's a way of avoiding a larger, costlier... Um, to, me, to me, it views... It, it's, conflict. To me, it seems like you're using the, the potential disastrous conflict to facilitate us invading another country and it's like 
to me, it's like the the whole principle: mind your business. Let's take care of ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's like if if the whole world turns against us, let's just outlive them. <laughs> I don't know, and maybe that's ignorant, and it's it's very possible that I'm just ignorantly thinking about it. But my my gut reaction is, if another country wants to turn communistic, let them. It's not my place to to tell them no in that, and let them fail let them let them see the the disasters of communism do we go into venezuela right now and and turn it around no we let them learn because because if we go in and and solve the problems for them they as a people as a civilization they don't um they don't grow from it but then again that's very callous that's very hard because you look at like the the people who suffer and it's like it sucks to let people suffer that are innocent you know yeah. So I don't I don't know the right answer, but my gut feeling is like. I like, think we should leave it alone as long as we can, but you also got to remember that uh, the more it spreads, the more people that you can influx into a different society to start sowing those seeds. That's what the Russians did to the U.S. and yeah. they corrupted us morally and economically. Yeah. So, I think there's a time and a place for conflict. I think there's a time and a place to go to war. I agree with that. My opinion is I would rather see it fought somewhere else than fought here, because I've seen it firsthand. And I would really like to avoid that coming here. So if we have to fight somewhere else to keep it from coming here, then better than better you than me. I can, I can we should fight that. the spread. If a country wants to become communist or socialist and they don't have plans of spreading and invading and turning everybody else communist or socialist, like Russia and Germany, cool, whatever. As long as you keep it in your borders, who gives a shit? But when you spread it, that's the problem. You're trying to force it upon everywhere that you can invade. Mm-hmm. That's where the problem lies. It's where having the 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 benefits that we have of transportation and of, of being able to transport ideas across borders and stuff, the way that's never been to our knowledge, it's never been available in the in the world, is it's a double edged sword. Like it's there are good things that there's absolutely good things that come from that free cha- exchange of ideas, but there's also it's also a lot of propaganda that that and a lot of pernicious things. Okay. So likewise, a passionate. Do you want anything else you want to go over? Okay. So likewise, a passionate attachment of one nation. For another produces a variety of evils. Sympathy for the fa- the favorite nation, facilitating the illusion of an emergen- of an imaginary communion common interest in cases where no real common interest exists. The infusing into one the en- the en- enmities of the other betrays the former into a participation in the quarrels and wars of the latter without adequate inducement or justification. It leads also to the concessions to the favorite nation of privileges denied to other to um, others which is apt du- doubly to injury to injure the nation making the concessions by unnecessary unnecessarily parting with what ought to have been retained and by exciting jeal- and by exciting jealousy ill will and disposition to re- retaliate in the parties from whom equal privileges are withheld and to give to ambitious, corrupted, and deluded citizens 
who devote themselves to the favorite nation, facility to betray or sacrifice the interests of their own country, without odium, sometimes even with popularity, gilding with appear appearances of a virtuous sense of obligation, a, command a commendable deference for public opinion, or a laudable zeal for public good. The base or foolish compliances of ambition, corruption, and infatuation. One of the things that um, I was thinking about when I read this, and sorry to kind of go back to the, the communism thing, but the one of the things, like, just reading, um, I was thinking of the Gulag Archipelago, and um, I've, I've read the first one, I haven't read the second, and I think there might be a third, I don't remember, but... Um, are you familiar with that book? Mm -hmm. So the guy that wrote it, he was a military officer in Russia, and he got um, he got turned into the gulag, and so he he survived the gulag. But he goes through and he talks about the different tortures, the different things that went through, and he he basically um, archives his experience. So the reason he got um, he got uh, thrown into the gulag is because. Like, he was one of the guys that would go round up people, you know? He was... And he talks about, like, how they would they would round up people and nobody would stand up. Then nobody would speak. Um, they would take a neighbor in the middle of the night. And if somebody, like, people would hide from, they wouldn't want to be noticed. And they wouldn't want to be noticed is because they had, they had um, quotas. They had to round up so many people within X number of time. And sometimes it was simply just, uh, okay, this person's convenient. And then they find charges after the fact well the charge that he had is he he served a little bit on the on the front lines and he had one of his friends that served on the front lines as well and his friend stayed there for longer than he did and his friend ended up getting captured and he was um for a short time by enemy uh, by the by the alliance and uh I, i'm paraphrasing this it's been a while since i read it but um basically because he had contact with somebody who had seen the society outside of the Russian society, he was um, that was why he got thrown into the gulags. And and so basically, when someone was, uh, people think it's it's crazy, but the like in China and I think in Japan as well, a prisoner of war that comes home that was a prisoner on the other side, they're pr pretty much like they're like executed, they're like um, ostracized. It's like oh you got you got captured and it's shameful. Instead of them coming home and being like taken care of, they are considered the the failures, and a lot of time a lot of them commit suicide and stuff like that. But in in Russia, the prisoners of war, if they had been treated, um, if they had been captured by by the Allies or if they had been captured by um, by the other side and and held captive, when they came back, they got thrown into gulags because they didn't want the prisoners to expose to the rest of the population the living conditions that the uh, that the allies were in because they were, had a lot of propaganda going into like these people are evil these people are bad you know and one of the things that um that comes to my mind though is like so much of of the way that you beat the evil is is just being good and a lot of the people the citizens they they saw how bad their their situation was in in russia and they and it, it was like it was just it was just they would hear ideas of america and it was like an underground like oh you know nobody was allowed to talk about it but if uh, but a lot of people had this tone of like the land of the free you know and and so the people themselves yeah the country was communistic but there was there's there's when whenever people experience freedom that's like that's um praised that's that's uh it's it's contagious so I don't know. Getting back to this, when we, I guess the thing that it was I was thinking about while I was reading that was how we, um, when we do have those those good relationships with other countries, it's like some it's very easy to convince the population that oh it's our duty because we have to hold up this good relationship you know when it's not actually in our in, in our best interest.
as avenues of foreign influence in innumerable ways such attachments are particularly alarming to to the truly enlightened and, in, and independent patriot how many opportunities do they afford to tamper with domestic factions to practice the arts of sedu seduction to mislead public opinion to influence or awe the public councils such an attachment of a small or weak towards a great and powerful nation dooms the former to be the satellite of the latter. Against the insidious wiles of foreign influence, I conjure you to believe me, fellow citizens, the jealousy of a free people ought to be constantly awake, since history and experience prove that foreign influence is one of the most baneful foes of Republican government. But that jealousy is that but that jealousy to be useful must be impartial, else it becomes the instrument of the very influence to be avoided. Instead of a defense against it, excessive partiality for one foreign nation and excessive dislike of another cause those whom they actuate to see danger only on one side and serve to veil and even second the arts of influence on the other. Real patriots who may resist the intrigues of the favorite are liable to become suspected and odious while its tools and dupes usurp the applause and confidence of the people to surrender their, to surrender their interests. The great rule of conduct for us in regard to foreign nations is in, is in extending our commercial relations to have with them as little political connection as possible. So far as we have already formed engagements, let them be let them be fulfilled with perfect good faith. Here, let us stop. Europe has a set of primary interests, which to us have none, or a very remote relation. Hence, hence she must be engaged in frequent controversies, the causes of which are essentially foreign to our concerns. Hence, therefore, it must be unwise in us to implicate ourselves by, art by artificial ties in the ordinary vicissitudes of her politics, or the ordinary combinations and collus collisions of her friendships or enmities. Our detached and distant situation invites and enables us to pursue a different course. If we remain one people under an efficient government, the period is not far off when we may defy material injury from external annoyance. When we may take such an attitude as will cause the neutrality, we may at any time resolve upon the scrupu scrupulously respected when belligerent nations, under the impossibility of making acquisitions upon us, will not lightly hazard the giving us provocation when we may choose peace or war, as our interest, guided by justice, shall counsel. Why, forge why forego the advantages of so peculiar a situation? Why quit our own to stand upon foreign ground? Why, by interweaving our destiny with that of any part of Europe, entangle our peace and prosperity in the toils of European ambition, rivalship, interest, humor, or caprice? It is our true policy to steer clear of permanent, permanent alliances with any portion of the foreign world, so far, I mean, as we are now at liberty to do. For let me not be understood as capable of patronizing indefinitely to existing engagements. I hold the maxim no less applicable to public than to private affairs, that honesty is always the best policy. I repeat it. Therefore, that those engagements be observed in their genuine sense, but in my opinion it is unnecessary and would be unwise to extend them. Taking care always to keep ourselves by suitable establishments on a respectable defensive posture, we may safely trust to temporary alliances for extraordinary emergencies. Harmony, liberal intercourse with all nations, are recommended by policy, humanity, and interest. But even our commercial policy, 
policy should hold an equal and impartial hand, neither seeking nor granting exclusive favors or preferences, consulting the natural course of things, diffusing and diversifying by gentle means the streams of commerce, but forcing nothing, establishing with power so disposed in order to give trade a stable course, to define the rights of our merchants and to enable the government to support them. Conventional rules of intercourse, the best that present that present circumstances and mutual opinion will permit, but temporary and liable to be from time to time abandoned or varied. As experience and circumstances shall dictate, constantly keeping in view that it is folly in one nation to look for disinterested favors from another, that it must pay with a portion of its independence for whatever it may accept under that character that by such acceptance it may place itself in the condition of having given equivalents for nominal favors, and yet of being reproached with ingratitude for not giving more. There can be no greater error than to expect or calculate upon real favors from nation to nation. It is an illusion which experience must cure, which a just pride ought to discord, discard. Ingratitude for not giving more. Sounds like our foreign aid. This is my first time. Okay, for those of you who are still around, which I don't know why. I do. I know I, why. I know why, but your your tenac tenacity is is fantastic. <laughs> um, we're Hi, trying Bob. a new recording system. Hi, Mom. <laughs> We're trying a new recording system that, um, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, uh, sound recording. Hopefully, we're trying to, we've been trying a few different experiments and trying to get the, um, sound better. And we'll see how this goes. We're experimenting. Experimentation. In offering to you, my countrymen, these counsels of an old and affectionate friend, I dare not hope they will make the strong and lasting impression I could wish that they will control the usual cor current and current of the passions or prevent our nation from running the course which has hitherto marked the destin destiny of nations. But if I may even flatten, flatter myself that they may be productive or some partial benefit or of some partial benefit some occasional good that they may now and then recur to moderate the fury of the party spirit of the of party spirit to warm to warn against the mischief of foreign intrigue to guard against mischief. the impostures impostors of pretended patriotism this hope will be a f this hope will be a full recompense for the solic solicit solicitude for your welfare by which they have been dictated how far in the in the discharge of my official duties I have been guided by the principles which have been delineated the public re which have been delineated the public records and other evidences of my conduct must witness to you and to the world to myself the assurance of my own conscience is that i have at least believed uh, i have at least believed myself to be guided by them in relation to the the still in relation to the still subsisting war in Europe my proclamation of the 22nd my proclamation of the 22nd of April 1793 is the index of my plan sanctioned by your approving voice and by that of your representatives in both houses of congress 
The spirit of that measure has continually governed me, uninfluenced by any attempts to deter or divert me from it. After deliberate examination, with the aid of the best lights I could obtain, I was well satisfied that our country, under all the circumstances of the case, of the case had a right to take and was bound in duty and interest to take a neutral position. Having taken it, I determined as far as should depend upon me to maintain it with mod moderation, preser perseverance, and firmness. Is this referring to the Rev uh, the French Revolutionary War? Probably. It's about the time frame. Because I know that they um, they wanted us to help them because, like, with Lafayette, and some of them came and helped us and stuff, and there was there was a big conflict there. If I remember right, wasn't yeah. Jefferson? Really, I believe Jeff. What, wait, what? Wasn't Jefferson really pushing for us to um, to help the the Revol revolutionary party and? Adams was really against it. Uh, I don't know if Jefferson would have been. Fr uh, seems more likely and more probable that it would have been Franklin. Oh, I, I was thinking Jefferson was some some reason in my mind. I'm thinking Jefferson has a, was a really really close friend to Lafayette. I don't know. I'll have to re research it. Because I know that this was kind of a big controversy. Well, still. Mm -hmm. Well, why didn't we go to their aid? Because we really couldn't. For one. We were really just getting on our feet. After deliberate examination with the aid of the best light I could obtain... I was well satisfied that our country, under all the circumstances of, of the case, had a right to take and was bound in duty and interest to take a neutral position. I read this already, sorry. To position, having taken it, I determined as far as, as should depend upon me to maintain it with moderation, perseverance, and firmness. The consideration which, which respect the right to hold this conduct is it is not necessary on this occasion to detail i will only i will only i will only observe that according to my understanding of the matter the right that right is that right so far from being denied by any of the belligerent powers has been virtually admitted by all the the duty of holding a neutral conduct may be inferred without anything more from the obligation which justice and humanity impose on every nation. In cases in which it is free to act, to maintain inviolate and relate inviolate to maintain inviolate the relations of peace and amity towards other nations one of the things that um, I was just thinking of is how how difficult it is for people especially in our culture today to take neutral positions it's like you have to have you have to have a, a opinion on everything and it's like taking a neutral position is oftentimes viewed as a coward's way out it's like you know sometimes the neutral position is the the, the correct position and, and in foreign affairs, a lot of times it is. But like, um, I'm I'm thinking like culturally as well. Like, oh, if you don't believe in this, you should. Be, you have to believe in this. You know, we're we're, we're pushed into these. They call them, what they're called in a, in a logic argument. They're called false binaries. And what that is is you're falsely given two choices. You do this to kids all the time. It's like, well, would you rather your peas or would you rather your carrots? Like, well, I don't want to eat vegetables at all is the is the the common answer that they would give but when you give it as two the two options it's like they, they they feel obligated to to make one of the choices you know it's called a false binary and that's what so much of the political discourse is focused on today it's like well do you believe in in gun rights or do you believe in 
abortion or do you you know what I, mean? I don't know those are not necessarily related but make me choose what make me choose <laughs> Did I already say the duty holding no, holding a neutral conduct may be inferred? Yeah, I did. Okay. The inducements of interests for observing that conduct will best be referred to your own reflections and experience. With me, a predominant motive has been to endeavor to gain time to our country to settle and mature its yet re recent institutions and to progress without interruption to that degree of strength and consistency which is necessary to give to give it humanly speaking the command of its own fortunes though in reviewing and though in reviewing the incident of my administration i am un unco unconscious of intentional error I am nevertheless too sensible of my def uh, of my defects not to think in not to think it probable that I may have committed many errors whatever they may be I fervently beseech the almighty to avert or mitigate the evils to which they may tend I shall also carry with me the hope that my country will never cease to view them with indulgence and that after 45 years of my life dedicated to its service with an upright zeal the faults of the incompetent ability the faults of incompetent abilities will be consigned to oblivion as myself must soon be to the ma mansions of rest relying on the kindness of the relying on its kindness in this as in other things the act and actuated by the fervent love towards it which is so n natural to a man who views in it who views in it the native soil of himself and his progenitors for several generations i anticipate with pleasing ex expectation that retire that retreat in which I promised myself to re realize without Allah uh, without alloy the sweet enjoyment of partaking in the midst of my fellow citizens and begin and benign influence of good laws under a free government and the under a free government the ever favorite object of my heart and the happy reward as as i trust of our mutual cares labors and dangers united states 19th of september 1796 i think the greatest part was him saying i don't think that i intentionally did anything wrong but he acknowledges that he's not perfect which is the exact opposite of what we saw with the Obama administration. So we didn't have any scandals. We didn't do any of this or that. It's knowing full well that there are scandals with Fast and Furious and Obamacare. And, but, I mean, it's just a, a stark contradiction to, you know, Washington's. I acknowledge that I made some mistakes I may not know what they are and I don't believe that I did them on purpose but he owns up to it mm -hmm. an honorable man and about three years after this he dies forty five years in the service of his country True service. Yeah. Not what a lot of the politicians say that they do. They're in service to themselves or to special interests, not to America.
one of the things that I always, the measuring stick that I always hold myself to is I always wonder if I'm the type of American that would make the founders proud. And that makes me try to be better. Do I get it right? Mm, maybe. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Do I get it wrong? Yeah. But. That's such a good measure. Well, that covered pretty much the entire time. <laughs> but it's so, so full of good advice. Which, at this point, has gone unheeded. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right word. Forgotten. Disregarded. One thing I did want to bring up, I messaged this to you, but um, did I, we don't need to spend much time on it, but I just wanted to point out, um, this week, uh, Mike Lee put together, they, they, they passed the bill, and Mike Lee was the main proponent on it. And Mike Lee, uh, again, for those of you who are listening in the future, like our kids or whatever, Mike Lee is considered, he's here, he's a, um, from here in Utah, he's considered one of like the, the really conservative, really guys that you can rely on type of a role that he's supposed to be a protector of the Constitution and stuff like that. Well, this week they passed a bill that was originally co co sponsored by Kamala Harris, if I remember right. But it um, it uh, made it easier for foreign workers to come in and, and work in te in the tech industry specifically. And with the an thing, emphasis on China, wasn't it? Um, I think the emphasis was on India, but India. Yeah, but it do, it, it, it doesn't have an emphasis really. It's um, from what I remember, it basically said it, it upped the number of, of immigrants you can have come working but on a county from like 7% to like 15% or something to that effect. And so anyways, it's just the, 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 the thing that's so egregious about this is the government is actively shutting down small businesses in the name of COVID right now. Like that's, that's one of the things that's going on right now is there's, there's government... Um, uh, mandates that are penalizing businesses if they open and they don't force people to wear masks or like like um, restaurants they're not allowed to have indoor seating in a lot of in a lot of states and stuff like that there's there's a lot of things that are going on that are very bad for the American businesses and they're trying to to destroy the American small business um, and at the same time instead of focusing on what's going to help the people you get senators, and these. The, Mike Lee is one of those ones that's supposed to be uh, the one of the good guys, and he um, just they just passed a bill that helps people come here and and um, gives pre precedence to jobs that are to people working out outside of um, or to people coming in to immigrate and 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 work here. And it's not like a it's it's not like in times of in times of plenty. That's a good thing because it promotes people to come and, and work and it makes it easier for, for us to grow. But in, in times where it's bad, it's not a good thing. And, and right now is a bad time, especially with the governments forcing it to be a bad time. It was going great a year and a half ago. It was going real good. And even then it wouldn't have been a good time to appropriate for this bill to get passed because the, the, way, the, the, way, that your, the way that wages are... They're not growing to the, the reason that businesses want to bring in to import labor is because they don't have to pay the labor as much as if they were to use uh, the people that are already here. Because of taxes. Exactly. And so it's just a reminder that every politician has their price. And, and we need, as, the citizen, as a citizenry, we need to do a better job at holding our politicians' feet to the fire. Literally? I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> you know how I feel. <laughs> I do not want to 
uh, incriminate, I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I think we need to go back to the advice and the side of our founders. I think we need to hold the Constitution as the highest law of the land and, and hold to that. We need to love it. Outgrow the evil. Well, we spent two and a half hours-ish. <laughs> yeah. This um, one was a bit heavy and a bit thick because the how uh, because of the content, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and hopefully we did it. We probably didn't do it justice, but hopefully we did an okay job. <laughs> we love the country. We love what it represents. And the promises, the great promises that were made, they're still applicable if we can get our corrupted, bastardized government out of the way. As it's not the corporations, it's not the industry taking from you, it's government. And they, both parties are, are really good and well known for projecting their sins and their evils on something else. They always project. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what a party's doing that's wrong, Look at what they accuse the other party of doing, and you'll you'll mm -hmm. that'll be a better indication than anything you find in the news. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, the left saying that Trump stole the election in 2016, and with all the evidence coming out now, especially in the last week, they just projected what they did on or what they do on somebody else. Mm-hmm. And that's why we were warned about parties. Let's all try to heed the warnings in Washington's farewell address. Let's all try to, you know, like you said, hold the politicians' feet to the fire. Literally? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> to to make things right. Let's start getting the right people in positions to, to fix this. Because the parties aren't going to offer up the right people. They're going to offer up the people that will maintain the status quo, which, like we talked about before is why a lot of Republicans aren't going into Trump's corner on this thing, because they want everything to go back to the way it was, because they view themselves as the elite, as the ruling class. Sorry. I'm sorry. Let's, let's make things right. And one of the things that I want to point out is, like, it's it's easy to get discouraged in doom and gloom, but we don't need to be doom and gloom. We don't need to be discouraged. The when when you're on the right side, when you're doing what's right, you know who ends who wins in the end. You don't have to be sad about where we're at in that process. It's going to be fine. Just keep doing what's right and keep encouraging those around you to do what's right, and it's going to turn out fine. And I'm not, I'm not saying that as some uh, naive, like, oh, hippie, all you need is love, which... Hey, man. Yeah, it's, there's, 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 there's strands of truth in that, but it's incomplete. It takes a whole lot of work. It takes a whole lot of, I mean, do the things that are right. But once you've done all that you've, all you can, don't let that, don't let your life be, be depressed by the evils of the world, because... Evil only has the power that we give it. If you focus solely on the evils of the world, it will have power over you. And don't let that happen. Let Focus on doing what's right. 
fighting for what's right and fighting for what's good and what's important and then be at peace let peace come into your heart and be and, and permeate your life if there's if there's something that feels uneasy do what you can to, to solve the problem do what you can to fix the thing like like with the with our politicians write letters to your representatives write letters write uh, call them do what you can to, to get them join campaigns of, of, of petitions that are going out to protect the rights that we that we need to protect and preserve but then spend time on your your kids spend time with your family spend time making others lives better and 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 that's how that's how good will will always win it's not a it's not a sprint it's a marathon and you got a motorcycle hmm well if you're running a marathon you'd rather run it with a motorcycle wouldn't you yeah I got a bad leg I know Mitch doesn't really have a motorcycle. It's gonna be pansy. I want one. I know me too. <laughs> <laughs> I want a motorcycle. It's uh, good stuff. And I want machine guns. <laughs> I want a water tower. Is that weird? Like I, I really well, that's probably more practical, I, more sensible than anything I, we just talked about. <laughs> I legit want a water tower at my house. Like I want, because I want running water, and I don't want to have to deal with the city. Is you know. I want to know if anybody watching this knows much about solar or wind. Mostly wind. I can find what I need to about solar. But I want to know if anybody watching this knows much about uh, putting in wind turbines, like the small ones that you can put in your backyard. I watched a few videos on them. And that's it, and I'm like. Uh, but I definitely... There's not much damn help then, are you? I'm sorry. That was too far. That? <laughs> <laughs> That's where the limit's at? <laughs> That's, you just crossed the limit. Good. Now I know when to, uh... Where to keep pushing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be good. Be good Americans. And the thing is, when you're good, those around you will see you and they'll support you. Like, everybody's looking for someone to, to support that does the right thing. It's like, if, if, if your business is attacked because of you not conforming to the, the dictates of the governor, those people that are around you, they'll support you. Trust, trust, the, trust the fellow Americans that are good. And... W that's, I mean, that's that's all I'm thinking. Is like, if if you're if 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 you're attacked, if your family's attacked because of your you doing what's good, that's going to cause other people to stand up to help and support you in ways that you would not expect. I'll go buy shit for me. Well, if it's things that I need and really want. Fred's growing a beard. Probably won't be as awesome as mine. Probably won't get as much stuff stuck in it. Probably not. There's nothing stuck in it. Sure, once you search for a little bit, you'll find badgers and stuff. Hey, badger, don't give a shit. <laughs> well, I think that's everything we got today. Yep. We didn't have a practical tip. No. We need to put more time into those. Yeah, probably. But we had... Oh, man, we had a lot of stuff. Seven packed pages. Mitch said before we started recording to me, I told him that I printed it out and it was seven pages. And Mitch is like, you... He's like, I willingly read seven full pages and didn't think about it. I knew it was long, but man... And it's like, yeah, it's, we didn't we didn't have that kind of dedication when we were at school by any means. I actually read a lot. Oddly, I believe that. 
Oddly, I believe that. Oddly, I believe that. Okay. This is episode 14. That's a 9. That is a 9. Go team. Rock the what? Rock the boat. <laughs> Rock the party. Rock the boat. Cause problems. Cause problems. Ah, oh, be a rebel. Be a rebel. <laughs>